Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about a pretty unusual and a pretty interesting discovery of a very massive black hole somewhere out there and to be more specific in this galaxy you see right here in this image the galaxy known as J0437 plus 2456 located about 230 million light years away from us a black hole that the scientists determined is moving inside the galaxy moving really fast with an average speed of roughly around 5000 kilometers per second or in other words this so far is the first galaxy ever found where the central black hole is not stationary in the middle it is moving somewhere we just don't really know where and by itself this discovery is actually pretty incredible but let's talk about the details here starting with the fact that we know black holes can obviously move across space, specifically smaller black holes like the one that you see right here, the stellar mass black holes, probably get kicked out of various star systems and thus acquire relatively high velocities. However, based on the observations from several different galaxies, including the center of our own galaxy, this is Sagittarius A star in the middle of the Milky Way, we know that these massive black holes, the galactic black holes, are generally kind of stuck in the middle. And that's sort of expected because when you think about it, these are really massive objects. For them to acquire even a little bit of velocity, something absolutely extraordinary has to happen to them. They have to experience a major collision with another black hole, or they have to be either pushed or pulled by a tremendous amount of mass in the galaxy. So for example, maybe a galactic collision. So for example, in this image created by Eckhart and Genzel from a European Space Observatory, you can kind of see how the stars in the middle of our own galaxy orbit around the central black hole. The part in the middle, that's the supermassive black hole Sagittarius A star. But the black hole itself is more or less stationary. It's kind of stuck in this particular point, which means that it's generally pretty easy for us to discover or to identify exactly where the black hole is located. And this is true for most galaxies. But is it true of all galaxies? And that's pretty much the question that the scientists, whose paper, as always, you can find in the description below, wanted to try to answer. They wanted to see if all of these central black holes are stationary. Or do some of them actually move around and potentially acquire velocities from, for example, a collision or for some other unknown reason? And one way of doing this is, well, it's to measure velocities of several galaxies. And specifically here, you would want to measure the velocity of the very powerful black hole in the middle first, and then compare this to the velocity of the galaxy where the black hole is located. If two match, it means that the black hole is stationary. If they don't match, something is going on there. Now, measuring galactic velocity is, for the most part, not really that challenging. As a matter of fact, there are several catalogs already where various galactic velocities have been measured by many different scientists. So, in that sense, we already have the details for most of these galaxies. But how do you measure the velocity of that central black hole, that tiny, tiny dot inside the galaxy? Well, the scientists found a clever way. They chose 10 galaxies and they measured the velocity of various water emissions that were located inside the accretion disks of these massive objects. Because it just so happens, as those water molecules start orbiting in the accretion disk, they actually start producing very specific emissions that technically are known as masers. Maser is basically like a laser, but the frequency is not in optical light, it's in microwave light. So it's microwave lasers. And these microwave lasers can help us establish the velocity of that particular object. Now, because of the sheer amount of stuff orbiting around these black holes, these masers are extremely powerful and they're visible from very, very far away distances. And because they all produce a very specific frequency that's specific to water, we can essentially use them to establish the velocity of this object and it is for the most part pretty accurate. And so by using the accretion disk velocity and then comparing that to the velocity of the galaxy where those black holes were located, the scientists realized that, at least for this particular galaxy, something was off. The black hole velocity and the galaxy velocity had a discrepancy of about 5000 kilometers per second. And that only implies one thing, that the black hole is definitely moving on the inside. And to get these very precise observations, the scientists used several telescopes around the planet, which is a technique known as VLBI, or Very Long Base Interferometry, which is also, by the way, how this beautiful image of the first black hole was created as well. It was by combining the data from various telescopes around the planet. Although sadly enough, some of the data for this study actually came from the now destroyed Arecibo Observatory. So in some sense, this is sort of like a commemorative study that once again showed us how important Arecibo was 
for various discoveries around the universe. And so these precise observations showed the scientists that nine of these galaxies had stationary black holes, but one was not. And why it's not is a big mystery, because the speed here is actually really high. As a matter of fact, it's moving so fast that hypothetically it could easily escape the galaxy and become an intergalactic object. But the fact that it's moving so fast right now implies, well, actually implies several things. Either we got ultra lucky and we just noticed a, some sort of a collision or possibly some sort of a major event happening in this galaxy that suddenly gave this black hole such an extreme velocity, which by the way is very, very unlikely. Or in other words, just to help you visualize this, we might have witnessed a collision between two extremely massive black holes, which was maybe a result of some sort of a galactic collision, which then essentially gave the final product a final velocity of about 4900 kilometers per second because of the transfer of momentum from one black hole to the final product. But that means that this must have happened extremely recently and because the galaxy itself doesn't seem to possess any signs of recent disruption or collisions, it's a very, very unlikely scenario. A more likely scenario is, well, actually, something like this. It possibly has a partner, and a very massive partner at this, that essentially gives this black hole a tremendous velocity. So we might be observing a binary black hole with one of the black holes emitting a tremendous amount of energy which allows us to measure it, the other one staying somewhat quiet and somewhat invisible. But the thing about this particular pair, at least based on the velocity, is that they must be really, really close to one another. Although not really that close. They're probably within the distance of maybe this much, which is roughly around 50 or so astronomical units, or just a little bit more than the distance of Pluto to the Sun. At this distance, the velocity would be roughly around 4 to 5,000 kilometers per second, assuming that the second black hole is about the same mass. And based on the calculations, it seems that this particular black hole is about 3 million masses of the Sun, which is actually a little bit smaller than the one in the middle of our own galaxy, but it's still massive enough to require a lot of mass and a lot of energy to basically have such a high velocity. This can only be provided by another black hole, a very massive one, or possibly a collision with the galaxy. And since the galaxy seems to be missing signs of a recent collision, it definitely suggests that there's a hidden object somewhere in the middle of this, very, very close to the other black hole. Now, if that's the case, this is actually a, a really important discovery. Because basically, for the longest time now, the scientists have been trying to discover a binary massive black hole with black holes close enough to one another that can finally solve what's known as final parsec paradox, also known as final parsec problem. This problem has been sort of described in one of the other videos, but in a nutshell what this implies is that today we believe that for supermassive black holes to collide with one another, something extraordinary must happen because at a distance of about 1 parsec or about 3.26 light years away from one another, the two massive black holes will no longer be able to find a way to come closer to one another. They will be stuck at these distances because there's just not enough material in between them to make them come closer, and there's also not enough gravitational waves produced to essentially shrink the distance between them. Because of this, discovering these two black holes that are way closer to one another could actually help us resolve this once and for all. And so this particular discovery could be exceptionally important for trying to understand what happens to these supermassive beasts in the middle of most galaxies, and also how is it that they actually collide with one another. But because this paper mostly deals with the observation itself and with the discovery and doesn't really make any specific points about what's going on here yet, we don't really know how to explain this. There's really no other evidence to suggest that something else is going on here or to explain why this black hole is moving so fast in the middle of its own galaxy. It is in some sense a mystery that we have no answer for right now. But because the scientists behind this paper developed this technique, it means that we can now look for other galaxies that might have this which can then, finally, help us solve the problem with the colliding supermassive black holes. Do they actually collide after all, or are they always going to be stuck at this final parsec? Something that has been bugging scientists for decades now, because nobody really knows if they really collide. But for now, that's unfortunately all we know. On this note, thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Either way, Maybe come back tomorrow, maybe consider supporting this channel on Patreon through channel membership or by buying the Wonderful Person t-shirt. And come back tomorrow, stay wonderful, and as always, bye-bye.